Oh, no, no, no. Hi, welcome to Radio Louisiana. <laughs> Louisiana is known for very, very, very fun festivals, and tonight we have one, two, three, four. We have quite a few festival class teachers and goers and fun party people from all over the world from Cake Fest, Louisiana, right now tonight. We have Jared Altmark, Sharon Spradley. Y'all can clap too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It, Don Parrot is here. Woo! Mark D. <laughs> Jacqueen. Jacqueen Jordan from New Orleans. He's actually from New Orleans. Dylan Humphrey is here. Woo! And in the background doing Periscope, Periscope is Shelby Spradley. Woo! Awesome. The, first question Don Parrot. What are you famous for in the cake world? <laughs> and 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 why should somebody want to go Google Dawn Parrot? Because they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, um, my specialty is definitely royal icing, pipe it, work. Wait, it's more what? It's pipe work. It's pipe work. Pipe work. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just Google Dawn Parrot just now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, even the even the poster fell in the, when she said this in, in the office. I I was like, wow, I'm I'm famous for pipe work. What is pipe work? It's when you put icing in a piping bag. Okay. And you use your hand. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> you have to use pressure control to make different items. You okay. <laughs> you I, 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 you I have a very strong hand. I have a very strong hand. Okay. <laughs> And Dawn, and, and Dawn is a blonde, just in case anyone is wondering. We're going to take a picture of it. <laughs> Where are you from, Dawn? I'm from St. John's, Newfoundland in Canada. Okay. Okay. Awesome. What's the next question? Where is that? When, when, when people come up to you, I know exactly where that's at. Whenever people come up to you at a cake show, what do they say? Oh, my God, it's Dawn Parrot. Maybe. I don't know. You okay. Say, hey, how are you doing? But I know you just. Can I get a picture? <laughs> can, okay. Okay. So okay. So okay. But yeah, especially if you're Dylan. Dylan's like yeah. a selfie Dylan, king. Yeah, yeah. Dylan, is, Dylan's coming up next, and and he actually took over 38 selfies in just the last night. just last night in the Double Tree Hotel in Lafayette, Louisiana. So, Dawn, like I, I was able to see Dawn teach. And and you do judging as well in different cake shows. Mm -hmm. What were the last five cake show you that you went to? I went that. <clears throat> okay, hold on, let me think back. Uh, Oklahoma Sugar Art State Show at the <laughs> Oklahoma State Sugar Art Show in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That was last October. Um, Austin, I judged Austin Cake Show just a couple months ago. Of course, this show. Before that, it was Florida, SoFlo, and Virginia, Virginia Cake Show. Wow. So you, tr everyone in here travels to go to a cake show. So cake shows are a very big business, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. So all of you are complete millionaires <laughs> in, the, in the cake business. Not really. Are we counting pennies? <laughs> what up? I, 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 hey, that's how you find out. <laughs> Trust us, we're not millionaires. No, no, no. We do it because we love it, not because right. we want to get rich. That's what I want people to know. You know, it, you know the cake world... There's so many different people who have been on Food Network and they've been on. Everybody always says the same thing to me. They go, "Oh, Cake Boss." That's what I hear. Like personally, they you tell really me. Want me to respond to that? I would like for you to respond to that. <laughs> I kind of say barf. Yeah. Okay. So everyone in the cake world doesn't really watch Cake Boss. Well, it's not that they don't watch it. The thing is, we watch it, but we watch it with a different eye than the average person. Mm -hmm. I'm a pastry chef in my background, so sanitation, safety, all that's important to me. You watch those shows. It's not real. It's not what happens in a real bakery. I mean, you ask everybody else in this room, they're going to tell you the same thing. That's made for TV. That's not what we all do. Okay. I wanted that to come out because I, I, I had a hunch about that because anytime someone automatically knows something, it's not usually real. That's right. So you heard it from Don Parrott. And everyone, <laughs> look, I'm not going to just put Don Parrott on the spot. Everyone in here shook their head yes. Everyone. So let's go to Sharon. Sharon Spradley. <laughs> Eat the <laughs> <laughs> and, and nobody can see this, but I'm going to describe it. There is a long, 
<laughs> black microphone, and it's in front of everyone's face. And 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 just kind of, if you can imagine that, that you know, I know it's a little graphic to think about, but Sharon Spradley has the microphone in her face right now. So <laughs> Sharon Spradley is from Australia. Correct. Okay, and everyone wants to hear your accent. I'm they just. Do. Yes. <laughs> right right now we have got seven people and they're like, Oh my god, let me hear her talk. So Sharon, what are you what what are you famous for in the cake world? I'm not. And she, I will say that Sharon is a very, very, very heartfelt person. More I, I think more than your average human on the planet because literally she was more worried about everyone else before herself. And she's very humble too. So I'm going to have somebody else explain Sharon. Because <laughs> what, what, how long have you been in the cake business? Five years. Okay. Is it, what did you do prior out of curiosity? I'm a mom of five. You were, you were a mother? Mother. Okay. <laughs> Which is, did you make cakes for your children and that's how this happened? or? Uh, yeah, kind of. That was pretty much how it went. Made and, a cake for my kids. People came over, saw it, said, ooh. I didn't know you could do that. I said, nor did I. <laughs> I know, but now now you're judging competitions. I've done one. And I know, but, one but you know what I'm talking about. Like, like, there's so many people who get into this business, and they follow everyone in this room, you know, and they say to themselves, can I do this? Is this something I can do? Yes, you can do it. So, you just better put the hard work and dedication right. and, and, and money into what it takes to right. do where we're at today. Right. And it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot on your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Especially Not, five kids. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, and one of them's actually in here too. So, yeah. you know, and we're we're definitely gonna get her take on this too. <laughs> so, hey, get, pass her the mic right quick. Oh, Sh Shelby. Oh, come on, B. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Shelby is very nervous. Shelby, hold the mic as close as you can, and, and uh, 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 what what would you say? What what would you say in reference to your mother in the five years that you've known her in the cake business? How much does she love the cake world and what she's doing? And how awesome were your cakes when you were a kid? <laughs> <laughs> they don't get cakes. <laughs> oh. Okay. You're going to have to hold it up. Hold it a little bit closer. <laughs> <laughs> at least it's not the long one. Yeah. <laughs> but any, any comment on that at all? Sure, it's really hard. A little bit closer. It's really hard. Okay. and Because well, you've been with her. Do you go with your mother to quite a few shows? I've been to quite a few. Okay. What have you learned as a daughter going to cake shows? Like, have you learned cake, anything about cakes? I mean, do you learn a lot about cakes? Do you, you find out who all of these people are? I mean, is this something that inspires you? Do these people inspire you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you heard it here. Yes. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to ask because, you know, people wonder these things. And they're always like, you know, when you say it's hard on family, it is. It, it, you know, and I understand because what I do too, I, you know, they don't see me for Easter, they don't see me for Christmas, they don't, you know, my mother can't stand that. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Shelby. With that, yeah, <laughs> she's very good at Periscope. <laughs> I'm picking Shelby. I'm picking. All right. Okay. Jared, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna have to take a picture of them pulling this mic to them. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, Jared, Jared apparently is is super famous. Not even a little bit. <laughs> okay, well, Jared, I mean, you have quite a following on Facebook, I know. Um, I'm definitely a baby to the cake world. Okay. Um, I don't have as yeah. <laughs> um, I don't have as many followers as most people, but I definitely have a, a strong group of people that support me and family and friends and everything. Okay, and it's J A R E D A L T M A R K. I D. J A R I D. Uh, J A R I D. Yeah. Like, 
Like Joe like, yeah. like like ID. <laughs> like ID. Can I see your ID? Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. Which <laughs> which does happen sometimes. <laughs> but uh, I, I have two questions. One, how long have you been making cake? How long, how long have you been in the cake world? How long what is your most inspirable thing about the cake world? Um, so I first little started bit, baking when little. I was 11. I didn't go any further. Oh, okay. You can always leave. I first started baking when I was 11, um, kind of breads and not cakes. Um, then when I was 12, I started getting into cakes from various food network shows and Cake Boss before I realized how, I guess, fake it was. Um... And then I truly got into the actual cake world, maybe last year, a year and a half. Okay. Um, you, you, what did you do this year at Cake Fest? Um, this year I competed um, in the special techniques, not on a cake category. And I am teaching a class tomorrow. Okay. And they could sign up for this class at cakefestlouisiana.com. Yes, they can. Still, there's still Sunday classes and you can do that right now so um to anyone's class too by the way just go to sunday and click it so basically you know what is something that somebody will get in your class tomorrow and say man this guy jared i like him as a teacher i want to follow him to the next cake show um, well, we'll definitely be learning a lot of different techniques and takes on structures, so basically the platforms to make those crazy gravity defined cakes. Um, I come at it from a different angle because mm -hmm. um, the only background I have is a student. Um, so I think the different takes on things and the different explanations, I think it'll definitely be a fun class. Well, the other thing, you know, making bread as a, a, a 11 years old, how old are you? Okay. You're 15 years old? I am. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Are you sure you asked that question? Are you serious? That, I'm blown away by that. Literally. Like, I mean, so you drove, well, that's a whole other story. You drove over here from where? Florida. Um, I went with my mom and grandma. Okay. Yeah. So you drove over here. This kid's 15 years old, started making bread at 11, and he's teaching a class at Cake Fest. That's amazing. It really is. Sure. You know? So, I mean, so, yeah. I mean, and then, you know, that's, to me, that's pretty awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, we're, okay, early bread making. Yeah. And then cake making. Completely different. <laughs> that's, yeah, but, but learning how to make bread, you know, it, there's a lot of interesting characteristics with that. Well, okay. Yeah. So, what are there a lot of things that you took from bread making to cake making? Honestly, there's not a lot that set that set you apart from other cake makers. Oh, even definitely not. Okay, um, there isn't def There's not much overlap mm -hmm. in terms of baking from cake decorating. Um, cake decorating is definitely a art, not a um, just not a profession or just a normal job. It's definitely an art form. Okay. Right now it's an art form. Okay. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, with a well, for sure, with an ID in a possibly in a bar, maybe. I do but have a <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna be finished with high school. Um, I'm gonna be in college. Hope to be traveling more, teaching more, um, competing. I definitely love traveling, whether it's cake or not. So. I definitely want to check out the world. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. And Mike D. Mark D. I, the Beastie Boys are one of my favorites. So I, I mean, literally, you know, I have to, I have to say it. Um, just go ahead and put that right in front of Sharon. <laughs> Mark D. Um, how long have you been in the cake world? Ten years. Okay. What did you do before? Um, before, well, same thing I'm doing now. I still work a normal day job. I work for a customs broker back in Montreal. Okay. And then I just travel and teach and have my own product line. Of cakes? Of sugar flour. Sugar flour. 
my specialty sugar flowers. Okay. So I have my own line of cutters. and. Which is not easy to do. No, a lot of flowers die in the process. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's a sacrifice. I don't know if anybody's ever seen sugar flowers or flowers on a cake, but if you see a, 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 a I take photos of flowers all the time, and when I look at a flower on a cake and I say, oh, my, wow, it, it looks real, I know how uh, talented y'all, y'all are. Because when I, when I see that, I'm like, y'all have no idea how awesome this magnolia is. Or, um, put, you know, peonies, uh, peonies, yeah. Peonies, yeah. Peonies. peonies. I always call them peonies. Peonies. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody had to say it. I just got fined 10 grand. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> That's the great thing about this because we don't get fined anything. No. <laughs> He's like, penis. <laughs> so, but no, literally, I mean, Montreal, Canada, all the way from Louisiana. How uh, Have you ever been to Louisiana before this? First time in Louisiana. What can you say about the food that you've had so far here? The food's really, really great. Okay. The driver's the, not so much. The driver's... <laughs> every... Oh, okay. They're pointing at me. And everyone that has ridden with me knows that... Yeah, I mean, my father won't even ride with me. <laughs> he he like, has almost has a heart attack every time. But, I'm, I mean, it's kind of normal, honestly. Like, we, you have to get in and out of traffic. Yeah, everybody... Oh, you don't drives, know? Yeah. Really, don't know what I'm doing, so. really? Yeah. I mean, they said that in the last interview too. I think Sarah was the one that said it. She says the drivers here are pretty amazing. Like I don't know how it, I don't even explain that. She said, "I." It's one way. Yeah, <laughs> it's special. Like, uh, special. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, we need some issue. We need some help with our driving skills in Louisiana. Um, I I, I want to ask Jared, where are you from? Oh, I'm from South Florida. South Florida. Yeah. So, I mean, there are so many different. <laughs> varieties of styles and things that y'all do that you know i think louisiana should be appreciative of everyone here you know i mean we got a 15 from 15 all the way down i mean you know i i uh, all the way up all the way up okay um what what is something that you know if they if they look for you how, how do they find some of these things that you sell um, the easiest way to find me is just do a yak search for Morrison's by Mark. Morse? Just try finding me by last name. Okay. Yeah, possibly Say your last name so they do. My last name is DeGrosier. Okay. Okay. Because, okay. believe it or not, there's a lot of people from, from, from Canada that live in Louisiana. Right. I mean, my neighbors lived in Canada. I mean, you know, I, I know a lot of people from Canada here. I mean, because they have the Acadians and a, you know, big, big Nova Scotia. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, so they we we we're big in we like Canada and the blue lobsters. <laughs> but is there anything that you've learned in ten? Because you do the other thing that you do is customs brokerage, right? Right. I mean, how did you get into the cake world? Um, long story short, about 11 years ago, I was watching Food Network Challenge with my ex. That's, I think, how a lot of us get into this industry is watching Challenge, or was, was watching Challenge. Well, Don shaking her hand, no, because she was a pastry chef, and she was also, before the time of Challenge, I mean, she was on Challenge, she was one of my idols on Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being so, nice to sit next to me. I don't want to get <laughs> so, so, I mean, so Dawn is super famous. Sharon is super famous, right? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> super famous. So, uh, yeah. super, super, so super famous. famous. Who is? You. It's, oh, I, so I think it's something we all struggle with. Is you know, we all have followings on Facebook. Some of us have been on TV. We've been in magazines, and it's still weird. It, it's weird, right? Yeah. I was in Las Vegas in October um, teaching and doing a wedding cake for a very close family friend, and I was going from my hotel to the hotel where the wedding was, and I actually got stopped on one of the overpasses in Vegas of three girls screaming my name, asking to take a picture of me on the overpass, and I'm like, I don't know you, how do you know me? And they're like, oh, we saw you last month in Orlando at the cake show. I was like, oh. And it was just like the weirdest experience for me. It is. And... I mean, my 10-year-old niece is like Uncle Mark's famous. He's got fans. It's like, that was me, Shelby, and Dawn. 
<laughs> well, they kind of looked like Shelby. So I didn't mind taking a picture with them because they were younger, but, you know. Okay, that was just wrong. Oh. Pull, pull that over there. But that's Mama Shelby. Yeah. Uh, just pull it. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> uh, pull, just pull it over on that side and for a second. touch on the Sharon issue for a second? I, I, I want you to. Okay, because... What issue? It's not really an issue. Oh, yeah. it's just, Sharon just doesn't give herself enough credit, I think. She's one of the most loving, caring people I know in this industry, and she's so sharing... And a lot of people don't know that she puts together a lot of cake collaborations. And, oh, she's crying now. Oh. You had to go say it? <laughs> <laughs> um, she puts together these great cake collaborations. And her big specialty, which she should be known for, is taking a group of unruly men, bringing yeah. us all together and making that us into a brotherhood. Yeah. Like, we would never, I would family, never probably yeah. been friends with Joe Ken or Dylan or Jared, for that matter. If it would have been for Sharon well. inviting me into a collaboration. Yeah. I wasn't invited. Because <laughs> you sit down to me. She doesn't have a penis. <laughs> oh, a peony. Yeah, a peony. A peony. A peony. A peony. A peony. <laughs> I tell you what, though, another thing about Sharon, she just gripped that microphone. <laughs> like a <champion>. <laughs> That was... Hey... Even Wayne Toops had to take a look at that one on the wall. He's, we have a picture of Wayne Toops on the wall. He's like, damn, she grabbed that microphone. No, no. Um, honestly, without Sharon, we wouldn't be the sugar fraternity. So, I mean, base, I mean, y'all, you, you would, I would have never dreamed in a million years you were 15 years old, by the way. Literally. I mean, that's kind of bro, really blew me away. Bro. I mean, you're, you're learning almost like a, a university degree being around these people. Really, you know? I mean, to me, I don't know. To me, that's like a big deal. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, you know, that, how do y'all feel to see a 15 year old guy like doing this? Uh, to me, it's, it's inspirational to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's inspirational to me. I mean, to see him do it uh, at that age, man, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So, I mean, I, I, I take my hat off to him um, because it is a crazy world. I mean, you have to have tough skin. Yeah, tough skin. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, right now, man, it's amazing. Yeah, other 15-year-olds are, you know, sending crazy pics on Snapchat right now. You know what I mean? What are you doing over there? <laughs> that, this, <laughs> you know, but I'm seeing, I mean, seriously, you know, like, you know, you're sitting in front of a Tracy Lords poster right now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I'm just saying, like, you know. <laughs> but no, I just, you know, I want to hear more about Sharon from Mark, Mark D, too. I want to hear this. Oh, you coming? Because I, I know, she, I know, you, I know she's close to y'all. Because look, when we were at the restaurant. Uh-huh. She wasn't having it. These are my boys. What, we she wasn't having it. She boys. said, "We are going to get Jacan, and we." Yeah, you know, I, I was like, "Just calm down and relax. I'm going to take care of it." Cake friend, I truly have. Yeah. I would say, yeah. Cake friends, y'all need to have one Facebook page, and all of everyone's the editor. And well, we do. We yes, do cake for, friends. For the men. We do right. the men. Okay. The, me and she's sexist. <laughs> <laughs> we, no, we she's do. Me and the me and and the men do have just a page. Okay. Because that's what we do. They do. I give them an idea for a collaboration, and they take it. But they are the only men. It's only me and the men. But they make me so proud because they. They just make these amazing things. It's most of them out of their elements. Yeah. Like we've done two 3D collaborations where they've done sculpted cakes. And I had um, Drew Padalecki that you did the right. interview with last week, who doesn't do sculpted cakes, give me the most crazy cake. It was beautiful. And he didn't think he could do it. And that's inspiring. And then I have Jared. And he gives me 3D centipedes. And I have Jock Han who gives me... What was that guy out of the games on one? Yeah, the, the samurai. The samurai, you know, out, out of the oh, video man. game. And it was amazing. Mark, 
you did um i did zelda zelda and we have these crazy things and they go in all these magazines and and these guys just excel every time above my expectations so yeah am i going to leave one behind at a restaurant you know at the hotel and we no can way go? hell no I ain't she wouldn't have it i ain't coming with that it's not happening because i'm i am there you know i really literally take care of them like a mom yeah. 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 Well, and that's awesome no i mean but it's awesome you know i mean to me and you know I hear a lot about you too because they say you invented this piping technique. You're so good at piping, you invented a technique. Well, you want to be careful how you word that. Apparently, yeah. I'm the grandma. <laughs> Here we go. You know. Well, back when I was a kid, my daddy used to make cakes. Uh, and look, I mean, you know, how does it? Well, I mean, how does it feel? You've definitely perfected it, though. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of what. Again? Was it again? Piper. <laughs> I mean, Piper. you are the queen of piping. <laughs> Tracy Lords used to be. Yes, now you are. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I, everybody, I mean, everybody here can tell you they probably got a certain area that they fell in love with, and, and just so happened piping is just something I picked up, and I just and I've, I'm self-taught. I don't, I didn't haven't had any classes or anything. I I have books from the 1930s, 1920s, and that's the stuff that I love. I love the stuff from people who aren't around anymore. And unfortunately that with that, there's no one to teach you how it, how you do it. So I had to, I had to figure it out myself. And, uh, but you know, the reason I still do it is I don't, I don't sell cakes anymore. I haven't sold cakes for probably 10 years. My thing is I want to try to teach people to get back into piping because that is a true technique and people don't know how to do it anymore. Yeah. And I think I need to be an assistant. Yeah. I can assist um, you can be, on. You can I can be your left be, hand. You can be a piping coach. Yeah. Well, I can be a piping coach. Yeah. No, but I mean, most of us will tell you. I mean, you can ask everybody in this room. We do this because we're passionate about it, and we want to share what we do and get like. I look at Jared. Jared's the next generation that's coming up and doing this. I mean, I've been doing it for about 16, 17 years. Okay, yes, I'm only twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we do it because that's. You know, I, that's the whole, the whole reason I'm here. I mean, I want to see that light bulb go off in a class. When you see a student who says, I can't pipe, I can't hold a bag, and all of a sudden they, they leave and they're almost crying over their piece, but that's all I do it for, you know? Yeah. Some people want to get rich or get famous. Let's be honest, fame's not real. Um, I do it because I love it. Half the time we, we all go to these shows, you were asking about, you know, us being millionaires, but <laughs> we go to shows and we're lucky to break even just to pay yeah. for our hotel and our meals, yeah. but we do it because... Right. Yeah. Because you love it. Yeah. It's just like musicians as well. I mean, they, they, they do the exact same thing. I mean, I know more musicians. I mean, literally, like, I know more musicians now in, in the last four years than I have ever met in my entire life. I go on tour with some of them. I help them with their gear. I try to show people what is it, what is it like, okay? And, look. Like, that's why I've, I've, I, I like y'all because y'all don't realize how close to musicians y'all really are. Oh, I think we do. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. We do. I mean, you know, you're going to a show. You know, you you're getting paid for the, for the gig, and literally, you have gear you have to bring in, and some of that gear is actually more than the musician. <laughs> I don't know that, and I'm saying that it's really a lot more. Like yesterday, I had to bring in a ticket booth. The, one of these giant pieces of wood ticket booths through a service elevator that looked like the movie Saw. So, like, literally, I mean, Want to play a game? I, no, I'm just telling you, like, literally, you never know where you're going to be dealing with and what you have to get in. And if you built something, can it get in the elevator? Yeah. And are the crazy ass people that I'm dealing with in Louisiana going to be pissed off when I try to bring it in the elevator too? You never know. You know, it's just, it's this. People deal with all these different things and. But the whole thing about it is, if you didn't love it, you wouldn't deal with it, you know? That's what gets us all. I mean, it, it, I, mean I think they're all going to tell you the same thing. It gets our, you, you, there's no feeling like it, like your blood just starts pumping. There's you no get so excited. Like. There isn't. It's, it's just the sheer joy I get when I have someone who comes in who's in tears and tells me they can't even pipe a shell border. And they leave a class with a 3D dome that they piped and popped off and put on. And they're like literally in tears because they're so excited about this thing that I know they're going to go home and practice and try it. To know you had a little bit of that somewhere down the line is not like it gives me goosebumps when I think about it all the time. Right. You know, it's just it's just that little bit. Like I said, and if you, when someone comes up to you, that's I think what you, know, you talk about as being famous. I don't see it as being famous. When somebody comes up and said, oh, my gosh, you inspired me to do this because I saw you do this and I tried it. 
there's not a nicer thing you can have someone say to you. It's just to know that you gave that little bit back. That that's what it's about. That, that's what it is for me. Like, you know what? Well, as cheesy as it's gonna sound, we talked about as being rich. We are. We are. We are. Not just but not, not money. With money. No, not We're rich in right. that experience. It's like Don said, that aha moment. There's nothing better in a class than somebody having that aha moment. Yeah. And I mean, I teach classes still. I want to continue learning. I don't want to just teach. I want to learn and make myself better. And I enjoy getting those aha moments myself in class. So I know when somebody gets it when I'm teaching, there's nothing better. It's the best feeling on earth. You're on cloud nine when that happens. Okay. Well, we're going to pass the mic to Jack Hayen. <laughs> Barry White Jr. <laughs> Jack Hayen, you live in New Orleans. Yes, sir. Okay. How long have you been making cakes or, and also been in the cake world? Um, this actually is my fifth year. Okay. I've been doing it for five years. What were you doing prior? Um, actually, I was a uh, construction worker. Okay. Um, from the background of uh, drywall finishing and painting. Um, See, this is even more, this is getting even better. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm self-taught. I <laughs> uh, haven't yeah. been in school before, haven't trained, haven't done anything like that. Um, I actually uh, love being in the kitchen. I, I, you know, I love working with my hands and uh, cooking and stuff like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I definitely... Um, <laughs> Enjoy the, 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 the pastry part of it, and we'll be doing, <laughs> we'll be doing uh, uh, painting and, and all type of textures and things like that. You know, I, I, I want to take it and it from, a, <laughs> from the biggest standpoint to something smaller uh, and, and put it on all cakes and stuff like that. Okay. So, <laughs> let, let me, let me I, can, I mean, that's amazing to me. To go from drywall, the construction, to cakes. Yeah, yeah. What? Because that transition from and you, and you have a cake shop in New Orleans. Is that right? Um, actually, I'm, I'm a home Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, literally, the first year. How hard was the first year? I was a train wreck. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, was a train wreck. I mean, <laughs> I I couldn't even imagine that. You know, because. Just to be honest with you, um, even today, it's still a train wreck. Um, and I, I, I put out work, and I still can see where I can better myself. Um, you know, everybody that I give it to, the clients or the customers, they may be amazed and at awe, but I'm still looking at it with that. You know, I, I could have done this better, or I could have done that better. So that is what motivated me to try harder, because um, I see that that flaw, which. Um, Becoming perfect, uh, I, I, it's unrealistic, you know. Um, so to to continue doing the things that that I do, um, now I look for that flaw to say, okay, uh, how could I, I how could I went about doing this better than the way that I did? Um, that way, when it comes down to teaching, I can tell somebody, hey, look, don't don't go this route. Um, take take it this way, you know. Um, and if you're paying for my class, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for my trial and error. Right. Right. No, I, <laughs> and that, it, it, I, I'm glad you said that because, you know, looking at some of the classes, they range from $75 all the way up to $750. When you ask yourself, why do I want to pay for this class? Why am I paying this much money for this class? Because depending on the detail, depending on what you're going to learn, you're going to make money in the future, possibly, with what you're learning. Yeah. Look at that as a, as a valuable investment instead of going, hey, th we get, deal with the same thing with the music world, too. I don't want to pay a $10 cover, but yet this guy just worked 14 hours setting up the whole damn thing, and there's a whole seven-person operation. Yeah. But you don't want to pay $10. You know, Think about that for a second. And I, and I tell people that all the time. Yeah. So I, I get it. Yeah. Completely. And that also tap into the thing of um, the whole monetary part of it, getting rich. Um, I believe that a lot of us, all of us here, and say that the money the money is more into our equipment than anything. We invest in ourselves. You know, we invest in ourselves in taking Take classes, uh, taking lessons, um, the equipment and stuff like that. So to talk about um, we rich or have money, I mean, 
you look at what we have, the, the bags that we carry or the equipment that we have, that's that's the money part of it. I mean, we sometimes we struggle. Uh, just as a, you put on the job and it's paycheck to paycheck. I mean, it's it's cake to cake for us. You know right, I mean? right. So it's, it's not a... You should go into the party store. People wonder why they have to pay $350 for a cake. Yeah. Because people don't understand yeah. exactly what Yeah, the background. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. It does. It is that, that way. That's a, that's a good point. Um, you know, a lot of people question uh, the price for classes or even question the price for a cake that matter. You know, you tell them, hey, uh, this is the cost of this project. And they're like, oh, man, on the cake. Yeah. But. Uh, that, and then look, that's something that I really want to speak about. Hey, I can get um, that. I can get that at Walmart for, yeah, for forty five dollars. Then you I'm should right. go to Walmart. I'm sorry, yeah. Why? Why yeah. is your can is your cake four hundred and fifty dollars? This, this is something I really want to touch on. I mean, just for example, you look at an event. People, a person will, will pay hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars for a hall. Mm. People will pay hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars for decor. Uh, Coverings on chairs. Uh, I can't afford. Table. I can't afford that four hundred and fifty dollar cake because right. I just paid one hundred twenty five dollars for my kids' napkins. Yeah. To match the pet to plates. Match, right. Right. So the thing, the thing, the thing I'm saying is that when people leave that event, they're not gonna say, "Oh wow, Pretty the happy. chair covers was excellent." <laughs> oh, man, look at the good damn, yeah, the damn chair covers. You know, that's not gonna be the, mo- the, the 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 big conversation. They're not gonna say. Man, them little sparkling lights you had on the table, <laughs> oh my God, they were amazing. No, they're going to speak about maybe the hall, but everybody's going to pass that cake, yep. and I promise you, that's going to be the talk well, of the town. Here's another way to word that. Someone said this to me, and I've never forgotten it. The bride is the centerpiece at the church. The cake is the centerpiece at, at the, the reception. Wedding. Yes. Yeah. And you've got to pay for it. That's going to be that picture they're going to have in their photo album for the next 20, 30 years. Right. And they just try to cheapen it and say, oh, but like you said, I can get it at Walmart. My response is, here's their phone number. Yeah, here's the, yeah. Here's the number. And it's not being yeah. rude. It's right. they don't put in the fact that we're putting a lot into it. We're not just giving you that basic cake. We're yeah. giving you sculpted they, cakes. I'm trying to all the time. Like, they have friends that, like, during a consultation, they're sitting there going, oh, oh, oh. Well, rides all the time. They're sitting here during a conversation. Oh, my friend's wedding. I remember her cake. It, it was either absolutely yeah. terrible or awesome. Yeah. And and um, it's definitely a memorable thing. Too. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and sure. they're always comparing. Oh, oh, my friend's wedding cake. It was like her gift fell or whatever. And and people question. Mm-hmm. The pride. I want, they, they don't realize that some of these cakes we have, you know, 50, 60 hours invested. That's before our ingredients, before the time we've given up with our families, before we've driven to the store to go shopping for those ingredients, top dollar ingredients, because we want our customers to have top dollar cakes. That's what it. That's what it takes. And, right. and our time, 50 hours of work is a lot. You want to pay us five bucks an hour? I don't want to be paid five dollars five no. an hour. You wouldn't pay that to the person cleaning your house. Well, you wouldn't pay that to the person that's coming to groom your dog. So why would you do that to the person that's giving you your centerpiece of your event, whether it be a wedding or a sweet 16? You want that. That is, like Dawn said, that is your centerpiece. That's what people will be talking about. You don't want to give them a, something that came out the freezer yesterday. And I have, I have a friend that works at a chain store. They get 20 minutes to decorate a cake. And I give you 20 hours. So uh, if you want 40... cake that's been frozen for like frozen, six months to a year. Frozen, right. six months to a year. And yet you don't want to give me top dollar, you know, $200 for something I just put 20 hours of work in. But so you to me, that's actually very inexpensive, $200 yeah. for it is. 20 hours. To the average person, it's right. a lot of money for a cake. Right. I get it. But if you want to have a product that wows your party, then that's what you should be prepared to put in. Right. That's what you give your cut. That's, that's not you putting money into into my cake that's money you putting into your your um pe- your uh, people coming to your yeah. events well, right. you to your guests you present? want your guests you're yeah. putting that into your guests yeah. not into your cake right. now i completely understand because when i when i will go to weddings with my camera and and people will come up to me after and say you know that you took 15 photos at this wedding i paid ten thousand dollars for my photographer the five photos that you took out of these 15 are better than anything I've seen. And I, and, and I tell them, I, I appreciate you telling me that, you know, but I'm, I'm looking for something completely different that I don't like the natural group. I don't want to take a group photo. I want to be 
different. I want to get grandma smiling. You mean? Yeah, I mean, because today there are. Yeah, I can I can assure you. You talk to a hundred people, twenty of them might want to take a photo. Everybody's so typical about you know themselves, but when you capture them being them, they look at themselves and go, "Wow, that's what everybody sees in me." And the same, it, it's the same passion that y'all have for your cakes. People, like, people go to Walmart for Walmart pictures. Right. They want to get Walmart quality. So yeah. when they go to their neighbor's house, they'll have the same picture on the wall, just a different face. Right. That's what you get when you go to Wal, you know, a chain store for a cake. Then you know, Joe Blow down the road t- two months later will have the exact same cake, just your son's name on it. When right. You go to one of us. That is a one of a kind in a world cake never been made before and probably unless somebody's going to copycat your cake which is not respected um shouldn't you know that's you're getting one of a kind in a world that's what you pay for one of a kind right chain stores are not going to say give me grandma's old brooch or bring me a sample of lace from your wedding dress and make a mold and apply it to your cake so you want to go to a chain store and pay a hundred bucks? Be my guest, yeah. but you're not going to get that custom finish that's going to make your okay. day special. And that's what brides are looking for. They want it to be their special day. Why are you going to tarnish that with cheap cake? I was going to say, well, with the photography and everything, kind of goes back to it's something that we're all passionate about, and and just hearing everyone talk and seeing it, it's it's not a cake to us. It's not it's not it's not, no. it's not a cake. Like it's I hate, I hate right. Oh, I paid two hundred dollars for a cake. No, it's not a cake. And it's, a, it's, it's, it's an artistic placement of uh, two people that chose to put them lives together. That's what it is. At a wedding, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but just the artwork piece, it's, it's, to us, it's art. It's, it's something that we put our heart and soul, our living, our entire life into. And, and people don't realize that. And that's kind of where... When I hear it, it's a cake. It's so it's almost a meaning in a sense. Where, but I'll tell you what's been the hardest thing, and you guys are gonna you're probably seeing it now, probably more than because yours just Eric. But those of us have been on TV. Oh yeah. They see these oh, yeah. outrageous cakes on TV because that's what we have oh, to yeah, make for our TV shows. Like, yeah. And then it's like, yeah. like, yeah. like, yeah. like, yeah. like the, like the, sh- the cakes that I do in competition. I mean, these are cakes like the last competition, the one I won the big one. It was seven and a half weeks, 20 hours a day on that cake. I slept two hours a night for seven and a half weeks. It's not an exaggeration. That's what it took. And people look at that cake and like, I, I want the cake just like you made for this. And I'm like, well, what's your budget, whatever. And they'll be like, oh, it's like $300. Like, that's a $10,000 cake. Or even $1,000. Like, but like, yeah, no, but, seriously. I mean, yeah. these cakes are going to be $1,500, $2,500, $3,500. And they, because they see it on TV, unfortunately, yeah. it's raised the bar what the customer wants. But they, they, they want champagne on a beer budget. Yeah. yeah. That's what everybody, that. every, and everybody does want that. Um, and, and, and or they want to negotiate $50. <laughs> Has kind of almost hurt our industry because while it brought to the forefront what we can do, it's hurt it because people think, oh, we did it that in four hours. They didn't realize the prep work that we did before yeah, we exactly. went to the studio. Like, push it one more, I can get a cake yeah. for it, and so I want the same one exactly. We have three people in here that have, oh, no, I'm just telling you, we have three people in here that have been on these challenge shows. So these people know and have lived and breathed what it, it is for these yeah. TV shows and what. You know, some of them did not get a fair go on these TV shows, and were were jeopardized on these TV yeah. shows. And some oh, sometimes that can hurt their business and not help it because yeah. people think that's the quality that they put out on an everyday basis, and that's not true. And, and so it's not always kind what happens to these people that that invest to go onto TV and take the chance to put themselves out there, and then. TV not always be so kind. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And when I'm speaking about that, when I'm saying, when I'm saying that, that, that goes back to me speaking about how amazing Jerry is. Um, because uh, coming off into a world like this, man, you really have to have a tough, a tough yeah. skin. Knowing that you've been wrong or knowing that you've been put in a situation where you really can't say nothing about it, but you still have to keep go on. forward with doing your job and keep on going, man. Do, do any and everything. Put on that smile, put on that hat, and, and keep putting this cake together at, at all costs. So, man, uh, hats off to him. I'm, I'm telling you, by him being the age he is, man, I, I, I really, I'm really inspired and, and amazed by that. Even I talked, you know, when I talked to him before when I first met him, 
and uh, he was saying things of, uh, no, no, I can't do this. No, I'm not. I was like, hey, man. And, yeah, when we, we, we were in Orlando, and, uh, you know, he mentioned that, and I told you, I was like, hey, man, do your thing, man. You know, I've seen your work. I love it. And, and just do do what you're doing, man. Don't worry about what everybody says. Stay in your lane. Do what you're doing. Whatever you feel in your heart, man, put the work out. Because us as artists, we we'll have uh, uh, ideas that, that just turn in our head, man. Sometimes I have ideas in my head. I can't sleep, but I have to get it out. So I get it out, and it comes through cake form. You know, um, touching on the basis of us saying custom cakes and stuff like that, we suck is one of a kind. My, my motto is, you know, if you can dream it, we can make it. That's that cake place model. Right. The dream we can make it. And I promise you, um, even within myself, well, you push myself <laughs> to challenge myself. I have not remade a cake that I made before. I haven't. Right. Um, and I tell a customer, they come and say, I want that cake, I want that cake. I'm like, nah, man, that, that cake was custom made for that person. And that's, that's what I do. I make 3D custom sculpted cakes. So when it comes down to somebody ordering a cake, that's their cake. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to get their cake. That was made for them. You know, the, the emotions and the, and the heart and the mindset that I have with doing that, I won't be doing it with your cake because that, that what they got was already in my system. I put that out. Let me put, let me have something in my system for you. And when I feel it, I create it. And I promise you, man, um, a lot of the artists, all of us here have that, I'm, I'm sure we have that same emotional attachment to anything that we do. Um, any cake that we put out, any cake that we deliver, anything that we, we, we make specifically for you because we just tapped into what you like, what touches you. So we're going to put that into this art form that when you see it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to touch you in places, man, that, that that's just going to... That's how I feel about it. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, you to see the cake and <laughs> I can't say what I was about to say. Turn that mic yeah. just a little yeah, bit. And, 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 uh, one thing All I, right, I do want to say, um, for us, for the sheriff, um, <laughs> the, lady, the lady is incredible, man. She she really is. Well, she, um, us, I can tell she's an inspiration to everyone yeah, in this room. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to really say why, because us, us guys, I mean, it's it's a predominant woman uh, industry, you know, you know yeah. female industry. So us guys, we, we kind of get overshadowed a little bit. No no disrespect. No disrespect at all to none of the uh, female artists. Um, I am my... All of them. Don, Don Perry, I've, I've watched it a long time. It's inspirational. I, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I sit back, man, and I'm not, I'm not one of the guys that really speak out. I really, I really don't speak out. Man, I sit back, I just watch and observe, you know. Um, and um, I've watched a lot of the artists. Now I'm amazed by everybody, you know. Um, but I do believe, and this is for me, that a lot of us guys, we get a hard rap. We don't get seen, you know. And... But Sharon, man, she stepped in that in that in that water with us and pulling us out for people to for people, for people to see us. You know, now they're recognizing like we have some men in this industry, man, that are extremely creative. And if it wasn't for her, you know, she 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 put us on the platform. She laid down that 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 pavement for us to take that walk for for us to be seen, man, for us to put out things that people probably wouldn't even thought that we could do because they're looking in a whole other direction. So she opened up a whole new world, I believe, you know, to say, hey, we have some men here that y'all are running about all over the world that um, y'all need to really start paying attention to. Right. You know? it, it's open doors for us. Yeah, yeah, it really has. Let's introduce Dylan. Yeah. We're going to bring in Dylan. <laughs> Dylan Humphrey. The first time. Dylan Humphrey. How long have, where are you from and how long have you been in this business? Texas. Okay. I started when I was 12. Um, and... Uh, he's 13. <laughs> he's 13. <laughs> 14. Uh, no, but I opened up a storefront uh, about a year and a half ago and started doing cakes. But the biggest thing I was going to add to the whole like cake decorating and as far as being a guy, it, especially where I'm from, there's not a lot of other, especially male cake decorators. And so it was so refreshing to come here and meet Sharon and, and really neat just to see there's other people out there 
my age and, and just other guys that do stuff and go through the same issues and and, and it's relatable and it's refreshing because I, I don't get to talk about stuff like that. Like just, like it's, it's really cool. And I'd give that to Sharon as far as putting us all together. Sure and, fret, man. And, yeah, so yeah. Fret. Sure <laughs> exactly. Um, but it's, it's like this whole experience with the cake fest this weekend has been amazing. Well, watch out for the super fret calendar. Oh man! Oh yeah! Man. Oh damn! Oh, you like that? Yeah. Eh? Charity. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I said to myself. Yeah. 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 Coffee right. went out this uh-huh. money. Uh huh. No, no. I just did. I'm not going to work on this. Look at this. I'm far. I just thought all the other guys. This is going to be cake. Yeah. 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 So it, 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 and and I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Did he just say, just say a, a calendar? Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. You want to come up? Here's okay. Well, I wish I could take them. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're going to they're going to actually have Yeah, they're going to they're going to do a uh, strategically placed cake. I'll hook you up. That that's hilarious. Play cake. <laughs> instead, of, instead of Playboy, it's play cake. <laughs> I gotta tell you, that would probably do good. <laughs> we got. I mean, I, what? What? How old are you now? I'm 21. Okay. And 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 he loves to take selfies. And don't be a, ever. I've never seen a guy. I don't think I've ever. Look, he's taking one right now. I don't think I've ever seen a man take more selfies in less than one hour. In my life. But no, everybody's having fun. I'm, I'm joking, but literally, you know, when they met me, they thought I was weird and crazy. So, like, yeah, they still believe that. So, but, but, you know, I mean, they're like, who is this guy walking around? And then he's got an accent. And then, you know, and, I mean, but literally, I, I mean, I didn't understand why y'all wanted to be together in an interview. But now I get it. See, I mean, you've learned. I've learned more about y- y'all than. Well, see, and when you hang out with people that you can relate to, I don't know, with me at least, you feel more comfortable and have more fun. They have more fun, yeah. And you're just yourself. You're you, it's, you feel normal. It's a weird, like it's a weird. It's a uh, accepted. We can be here in a competition without competing with exactly. each other. Yeah. We're like a big dysfunctional family. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. but it works. It like works, yeah. But it works. And, and even though this is like one of the first weekends that we've all met, it feels like we've known each other, or at least for me, forever, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Hey, oh. Yeah, even with the competition. <laughs> even with the, <laughs> even with the, with the competition. <laughs> even with the, <laughs> even with the competition. I don't, I don't believe that, uh, we actually come here to compete. Um, I, I believe that, us, us doing the pieces and putting them in, in the competition is actually to inspire you know the next the next the next phase or, or whatever to say um, how we can actually push each other boundaries you know um, I don't think it's a it's a, a real competitive deal for us I'm really going to win this I, I believe that it's just a um, something to, to like I said push each other boundaries to say look what I've done and then you be like man that was real cool you know what I'm gonna try to step it up and then we can all sit around Laugh and joke about it, talk about it, inspire each other, and move on to the next competition. competition. And then yeah. in the competition, competition. Yourself. yeah, with yourself, yeah. exactly. And then, the right, it's just cake. And at the same yeah. time, you have a lot of people that's beneath us that's coming in, that's coming into the cake world that um that want to see this type of stuff. So it's not let alone inspiring ourselves or pushing the boundaries of our our brothers or our sisters mm-hmm. or cake. My aunts, my aunts, whatever you want to call them, um, is actually to give these people who are coming to these shows. They're paying for this, so we want to give them something that that they, that's going to wow them. Yeah, that's going to make them continue. If, it, if it's not for them coming to the to the competitions and the shows, I mean, we wouldn't be able to do this. And then can I touch on that one just a little bit? Yeah, because a lot of these people that come to the cake shows come with their kids, and that's with Jared. He really does. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's great because they come in with the kids and their kids see him (laughs) at such a young age and they're like, well, shit, if he can, (laughs) yes, (laughs) they're like, crap, you know, (laughs) it's like, it's like family guy. Yeah, but they say like, you know, well, if this 
this young guy at 15 can produce this amazing piece, well, geez, mom, maybe I'll sit in on that class with you. You know, maybe could I take that zombie class that Jade is, you know, taking or teaching? And can I do that with you? And I saw a kid today in the elevator do that exact thing with her mom. She took Jade's class. And that's, it's people like Jared that are saying, look, I'm, a, I'm not afraid to put myself out there at 15 and take a chance and, and do something crazy. And that's what, you know, Jared's really inspiring, I think, for a lot of the younger generation that's coming up. And, you know, like a Drew and, and Dylan and Tyler that are all, you know, really in just 20 years old, that are inspiring. And really they are. I had an 11 year old in my piping class this week. See, that's perfect. It, 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 I was so excited. I mean, 11 years old, her mom dropped her off and she said, does she need anything else? I'm like, no, she's good. We got her. Mm -hmm. And she finished the whole project. I mean, 11. Yeah. Most kids that age don't like to do what I do because it's old school. Yeah. And to see her like so excited to try it, she was very quiet and timid, but you know, she did it. And her mom came in and of course her mom was like, they told me you're famous. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm so not famous. They're lying. And then, but the mom saw her project. It just was, the mom was almost in tears, you know? And like I said, and then she was walking, she says, there's a lot of young people doing this now. And I said, there really is. I said, she's starting early. Kids yeah. 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 And I said, I said, like, I said, you know, like you need that, you need to like, harbor that and love it and encourage her to keep going. I said, you don't know where she's going to be in like maybe three years from now. And, and see, my parents mm -hmm. are so supportive. Oh, with that. No, no, no. No, but my parents are so supportive of the whole cake idea in the first place, and there's some parents that aren't. Right. And and he's like, and yeah, and I've been talking to your mom, and that is. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's Jared's the new daddy. Uh, Sorry, Scott. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, and I have I have such great parents and family and friends that have supported me to get where I am today, and and I just been blessed to have that surrounding and and friends here this weekend, and it's awesome. And I see people in this industry and others that are tore down from from either social media or friends, and I'm so lucky have the support that I have and and the Facebook followers I mean the, everyone's so supportive and it, it's kind of humbling really and it it's also <laughs> <laughs> what, what what is um <laughs> okay what is what is something that a parent has walked up to you and said well um, they've actually been messaging me on Facebook I actually have a mom and her 10 year old son driving from Alabama tomorrow morning just to take my strong class. And she messaged me and she was like, is it okay? Well, because he's 10 years old, but he, she kind of said it in a way like, like I'm just dragging, you know, my third arm in. But um, I was like, yeah, do you like know that I'm 15? Like, I want to be that. I wanted to be that 10 year old kid to be dragged in those classes because really no one in my family does this. I don't even know truly how I picked it up, but. I think it is so cool how I just have that little part in the cake world. Big, small, whatever. One class at a time, one composition piece at a time. Just to make that small difference, I think that's what I love the most about the cake world. And everyone's support and how they help each other and we build each other up, even though there's some people who do But it's definitely an amazing community. Yeah, for sure. And the most impressive thing I think about Jared is being that he's 15 years old and he is an inspiration, like Joe Cam said before. I learn a lot from this kid. I talk to him almost daily. And just to see him so down to earth and so grounded, it's amazing. I mean, basically, for a very long time, I separated church and state. Um, I mean, I would say a good four years no one I went to school with like truly knew about my cake world um, and just this year um, I've been a part of the journalism program and I'm friends with the teacher and she's like we're putting you on the front page of our newspaper like it's happening people need to know and everyone knows and now I have kind of church and state both supportive and it's really awesome for sure well
I, I just want to say this. I mean, thank y'all for being here and sharing all this, you know, because a lot of, I mean, y'all, it proves that no matter what age you are, no matter what you want to do, whatever, whatever moment you decide, whatever, I mean, Dawn, I can't, you know, I wish you were a little older. You know, she's 17 years old. No, I'm just... <laughs> Give me a couple, couple more years. Give me a couple more years. I want to touch on one thing that Go ahead. With with back to the, the the monetary part of it. Um, when we see students leave, you know, you come into the class. Please, people, purchase the classes, buy the tickets, get in the classes. But when you see the the, the students um leave and knowing that they say, I haven't done this, I don't know how to do this, I'm you know, I don't mess with this or that, and to leave there and it's like. Once they step back and look at it and be like, man, I can't believe I did it. And having a wonderful instructor as Dawn, Sharon, uh, Mark, Derek, Dylan, myself, and everyone else, you know, it's like that. that's the fulfilling part. That's the monetary part. Um, even today in my class, there was a lady that never touched fire before, never knew anything about uh, structured cakes or anything like that. And the whole way through, she was like, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. I'm like, no, we're going to start all over. We're going to take our time. We're going to do it. You know, and at the end of it, um, from doing nothing, she, her, her project was one of the best. Right. The end. And that made me feel good. It made me sit back and say, hey, I'm obviously doing something right. Yeah. You know, um, and that's good. I'm, I'm not worried about the dollar amount, man. That, to see somebody go from nothing to something in a short amount of time, you can't buy that, man. That's, that's price. I mean, basically, y'all are reprogramming brains to understand that, you know, y'all are shifting the right brain in, into these people, and that's what's happening. Y'all, y'all, and I know this sounds crazy, but y'all are the university of cake making for these some of these people. I mean, literally, you know, you're, you're the professor. They're coming to the university to learn how to make cakes in different styles and different ways, and, and, and realistically, it's um, it, it, a light bulb is going off. Yeah, just one more. Because I, I, I really want people to understand the part of it. Um, because I, I get people that, that, that come up and say, hey, man, you got it going on. You make a lot of money, this, that, and the other. And it was something that she, that, uh, uh, you know, said, it's just the, the money. I don't want people to think that we make a whole lot of money. Man, we don't. You know, um, and I, I mentioned that. I'm not really. And I, I, I brought that up because I, I, I had a feeling that, you know, y'all were going to have some good insight on Yeah, um, with, the, with, the, with the money part of it, um, I, I said that we're not really worried about the money. I mean, everybody. Has to right. Be we all have to make a living. We have to make a living. But what but, I mean, I, I, I think I can speak for everybody when it comes to the money part. That's something we already know that we're going to get. Yeah. That's going to happen. What we don't know is the reaction and the emotional connection from the student when they leave. Exactly. We don't know that. Right. So to receive that, that's that's bigger than the money part. The money part, we know that's coming. That's already there. But what, what these students leave with, from what you've taught them, we don't know what they're going to do with that. And to see them people walk out of there smiling, see them people walking out of there saying, I can't wait to get home to redo this again or to keep practicing. We don't know that that's coming. And that's that's that man. You can't buy it. No, it, and and you know what? Honestly, it's hard to teach it too. Yes. Okay. So that's that's the value of what you're getting. I mean, you you you're getting value from people that have been there. They've seen it. They've seen. They remember where they come from, and you're getting that from that teacher as well. well teachers invest more than just their time to to teach right. classes. We have to prep it. We have to buy the stuff for it. Most of the cake shows now, you have to provide everything for your students. You give a class total. Say your class total, you'll accept 24 students. Theoretically, you should have product for 24 students because you don't know whether you're going to have one student or 24 at the end of the day. That's 24 rolling pins. That's 24 exacto knives. That's 24 lots of fondant. That's 24 dummies. And if you're doing a three or four tier cake, then that's a lot more dummies. Yeah. Uh, and so when you look at a class and it's 75 or 750, it's not 
you not just that, that's not what the instructor gets. At the end of the day, they have a lot of costs there: their travel, their food, their accommodation, and all the supplies that go into that class. So I think that's something that, that a lot of more students need to take into consideration: that we're not getting rich. We are doing it because we love it, but we have a lot of investment too in our, in our products. We're not, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, we, we you're put, coming out of the negative. We're putting not, money in. Not, not really in the negative and we're trying to rise money. up from the negative. Right. We're putting that money but, in because yeah. we believe in the students that come in our door too. But when people walk in our door, I think our theory is we will we will give you enough input to help you walk out of there hopefully crying because you can and have achieved something that you didn't before and if we don't have students walking out happy then i don't feel like any of us feel like we did our job properly so we really care we do right and the students and that's another thing when you talk about i tell my students in my class i've been to a lot of shows where people are taking these 600 dollars classes 400 dollars classes and unfortunately, not all the teachers are equal. Not all of them are in it for the same reason. And there's a lot out there that charge these high amounts of money, but they're not giving what they're offering. So I encourage all the students, do your research on the teachers. If you took something in my class, but it wasn't what you hoped, please tell me. Yeah. Right. I can't get better as a teacher well, if you don't tell me the bad. Hey, and you know what? You, you, you may have paid $400 for an awesome teacher. And then you expect the same thing from somebody else. So you are right. I mean, you know, and then you leave this next class mad because you didn't get what the first one taught. Or it happens. It happens, it happens a lot. But you have to do. But you have to do the like students. I encourage all the students. I say research that teacher. Ask for people who've taken classes before. Yeah. Look at. You can't just look at their work because sometimes, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that are really good at what they do that doesn't necessarily mean they're a good teacher there's a big difference in uh, teaching so right. you know do the research yeah, yeah like right. i want i want to see these students coming out of classes like i see them coming out of all the rooms this weekend and they've been thrilled i haven't heard one complaint at all this right. year at all and that's that makes your heart warm because uh, oh jared hasn't taught yet sorry yeah. <laughs> oh i know my students will be happy yeah, there you go. Well, yeah. i want to start joking. I, I want to do this before we come to a close i want to say you know tomorrow you start at 10 10 p.m it's open to the 10 a.m at the double tree hotel in lafayette louisiana uh it's cake fest louisiana and basically if you want to find out more it's cakefestlouisiana.com uh, if you still want to take a class, sign up to a class. Classes start at 8 a.m. Right. Myself and Jared. Some of them are at 7, that's true. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I haven't done this before, but you know what? I think I'm going to start. What is one word to explain yourself in the business that you're in? What? Say it one more time. Like, just one, one word to explain yourself, just to tell people, you know, this is me, in one word. You go for it? Blessed. Oh. Supported. Unique. Oh, you <laughs> Passionate. Dylan. <laughs> Worst. <laughs> Just one word. One word. Well, you all went first, so you've taken a lot of them. Amazed. <laughs> and Sharon. Friendship. Awesome. Did you see one? Awesome. I just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for all taking the time to come to Louisiana. Thank you all for coming to Radio Louisiana and giving us all so much insight about your business. And literally, go to, you know, go to, find these people. Find their Facebook page. Like it. Do something. But follow, you know, clear, literally, <laughs> literally, you know, you couldn't find better people in the cake world. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you all. Radio Louisiana on a Saturday night.